All right, guys, today we're actually going to start chapter 9. Shh, Sam. And it is my favorite word in all of chemistry. And I want you to write this up here at the very top of this. Stoichiometry. 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 Okay. What stoichiometry means is counting in chemistry. Uh, uh, no. It means counting in chemistry. And here's the problem with counting in chemistry is that what are you counting? Atoms. How big are atoms? They're really, 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 I could say really for the rest of the day and I still wouldn't get there, but they're really small. And so the problem is we've got to understand how to get these really bitty, re, re, really bitty, really small, tiny numbers into under, numbers that we can understand. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the most important part about stoichiometry, and that is called mole ratios. I'm going to give you something very important. Mole ratios come from, actually I'm going to come off this page because it's driving me nuts because it's super slow already. All right. So mole ratios, maybe it's just the whole computer is slow. If I ever get a new computer, I'm going to film myself hitting that with a baseball bat and I'll send it to you. That's the final exam. Oh, you need, oh, my bad. Um, th that one's right here. Okay, so write that. I've got to actually, uh, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, there were several of us there. We do have video evidence of it, but you guys won't ever get to see that. <laughs> All right, so where what what's the whole entire thing about stoichiometry and mole ratios important is first of all you've got to be able to have a balanced equation. And what are these that's not what I wanted. What are these things in a balanced equation? Those big numbers in front that make it balanced, all right? Remember a long, long, I've been saying this forever, that whenever we set up a ratio, remember you put the, the parentheses and what on top goes to the bottom, right? Remember I've been saying this the entire time. If you see a mole, what do you always put beside it? One, do not throw anything at me, but that has been a lie this entire time. There is a, there is a, I agree, chemistry is all about lies until you can actually understand what it really all comes down to. But there is a point in which a mole does not get a 1. And that is what is going to be called a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. And that's what we're going to get to today. But I can guarantee you it's, it's the easiest thing. And all you have to do is look at the coefficients of a balanced equation and plug those numbers in. So it's not any different. You just have to look at the balanced equation to figure out what the value is. Oh, absolutely. freaking lowly. I would say more like 98%. Yeah. Other than naming compounds, pretty much everything else has been a false. Yes. No, you've you've learning you've been learning the basics of what chemistry really is. All right. So how can the coefficients in a chemical equation be interpreted? Hang on. Shh, stop. <laughs> A balanced chemical equation can tell us the number of reactants and product particles, ions, atoms, molecules, or formula units, that are necessary to conserve mass. Now, I want you to circle this word right here for me. Conserve mass. What does that mean? Save as much as possible. So we did this a long, long time ago, and there's actually two laws. There's a law of conservation of energy and the law of conservation of mass. And what does that mean? That means what you start with, you must 
end with. So when we're trying to conserve mass is that it has to stay the same throughout an entire chemical reaction. Typically, when we balance the chemical equation, we think in terms of individual particles. However, in real life, the reaction represented by an equation and occurs in an unimaginable number of times. Okay. Short of writing very large numbers. Now, have you ever seen this number before? That's Avogadro's number, right? That's one mole. In front of each chemical equation, we can interpret chemical equations so they are more, re re more realistically represented, what uh, represent what happens in real life. In this activity, you will explore different ways a chemical reaction can be interpreted. So let's start with the first, a chemical reaction. Now, I've got a simple, simple, simple question, and I want you to write it above it. What type of reaction is that? Don't say anything out loud. Just write the type of reaction that would be. I hope you all get this right. Why are you writing? No, literally write the type that, that this is. Uh, hopefully you wrote the following. <laughs> this is funny. Now, my second question is, and I, and I said this, and I'm seeing how many of you remember, like, since I'm, like, Captain Chemistry now. Thanks, Sarah. I'm going to start doing this. Sarah, you're not even watching Captain Chemistry, right? <laughs> okay. All right. No, this is a teapot. <laughs> you got the handle, right? Sure That's true. And then I'm not Where either. Is Where is <laughs> um, what type of reaction? There was a special name for this reaction that I taught you guys a long, long time ago. It's been a while. It was back on, actually, it was on the last poker we did. Do you remember the name of this reaction? It was the production of ammonia. Haber-Bosch, remember? Okay. Haber-Bosch, H-A-B-E-R, Haber-Bosch. Um, they actually won the Nobel um, Science for this, for, for this process. All right, so this is the synthesis of ammonium. Do you agree that that reaction is balanced? Yes, all right. So what's technically happening here is, first of all, what is N2? Nitrogen. How many of those do we have? We have one nitrogen molecule. Okay. We have one nitrogen molecule. All right, how many, what's H2? Hydrogen. How many hydrogen molecules do we have? We've got three hydrogen molecules. So if we take one nitrogen and we take three hydrogens and we slam them into each other, make them react, what can we produce? Ammonia, and how many of them? Two of them. So this is the chemical reaction that's going on. So number uh, number one A. What are the coefficients for each of the following substances? That's really easy. What are the coefficients for nitrogen, hydrogen, and um, ammonia? One, three, and two. Where did you get those numbers? From the coefficients. That's easy. Uh, B. Draw particle model. Uh, excuse me, models to below to illustrate the reaction in model one. Now, this is the reason why we're doing this together because this is a challenging task. So I'm going to rewrite this here and we're going to do it together. So I've got N2 plus H2 goes in reaction of NH3. Now, some of you probably, possibly, maybe remember this. Some of you possibly, maybe don't. Draw that for me. Now, throw them way back. How many electrons does each atom need to have? Eight. Does each nitrogen have eight? Yes. Because how each line represents how many? Two. Very good. All right. H2. How many does each hydrogen need to have? Two. Well, you're done there. This is a genuine question. I'm just curious. How many of you, if you had to, could draw the Lewis structure of an H3? Do I remember what it was? Trigonal, pyramidal, bond angle. No. One oh seven. Hybridization. SP3, 
Remember, because you put a flower petal around each thing. Um, polarity. Polar. Um, intermolecular force. It's either London dispersion, dipole, dipole, or hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond, why? It's got a hydrogen and it's got fawn. Okay, so this is kind of what's going on. So that's what you should have drawn under, underneath those three things. All right, that's just kind of reaching way back. All right, so number 2A, consider each uh, situation below as it relates to model one. Calculate the amount of reactants consumed and products made. There's two words that I want you to kind of focus on right here. First of all, it's the C word, consume. What does consumed mean? Eaten or destroyed. Okay. So as this reaction is reacting, listen to that, that phraseology. As this reaction is reacting, do you agree that these all these atoms are just slamming into each other? Okay. And so if you go back and look at this picture, if you take one of these, you take three of these, you're going to get two of those, right? Because I should, should have actually balanced this. I apologize for not balancing it the first time. But that's essentially what you're going to get. In your mind, if I handed you all those little things and said, here, could you create, create all this? You should be able to. Because if you think about it, if you take this, and again, I really don't want to do this. Um, somebody smarter than me. Let's see if I can do this. I want to copy this thing. Can I copy this thing? Yes. We did it. We did it. Did it work? Yes. Okay. We didn't get the nitrogen, but that's okay. If I take this and I split it in half, how many of those are you going to get? You're going to get two of them, right? So would you agree that this could go right here? Okay. Yes. All right. Do you agree that these two could go right here? All right, well, then where do I get my third one from? Don't I have some more of these things? Okay, so that's where I could get them from. And so that's how you could take all these things and break them apart and re-put them back together to form the product. So if you can actually see that visually, if that makes sense. So consume means to break and products are made. Record the ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen to ammonia and reduce the ratio as the lowest whole number possible. All right, for a single reaction, how many molecules of each substance would be consumed or produced? I'm trying to think of the best way to... Yeah, okay, that's right. So, there would be one of these, there would be three of these, and this would be two of those. Do you agree with that? Yes? Where did all those numbers come from? The coefficients. And so then it says reduce it into this ratio. And so we're going to put 1 to 3 to 2 ratio. You know, you know those colons between numbers mean ratios, right? Okay. Now, what happened if the reaction occurred 100 times? How many molecules would be consumed or produced? So how many nitrogen molecules would be um, consumed? 100. What about hydrogen? 300. And what about ammonia? 200. Now, in that very last column, notice this word right here. What will we reduce it back to? 132. Now, I'm not going to make us do the ridiculousness the last question asked, but there is something I do want to look at. It says, if the reaction occurred 538 times, first of all, how would you get those first three column numbers? Multiply 1 times 538, 3 times 538, and 2 times 538. But bottom line is, what would the last column still be? So what are they? What do you think they're trying to get you to see here? No matter how many times, no matter how much, how is it always going to be reacting in ratio with each other? The same ratio. Okay. You're always going to consume one nitrogen for every three hydrogens, and how much are you going to produce? Two ammonies. And where did those numbers in that last column come from? The coefficients. Okay. All right, so 3A. How do the uh, reduced ratios in the last column compare to the coefficients in the reaction shown in Model 1? 
They're the same. They are the exact same. Use mathematical concepts to explain how your answer in part A is possible. It's always the simplest ratio. Does that make sense? Doesn't matter how many you have, you can always reduce it to the smallest whole number ratio. Say that again. Okay. All right, number four. Even if 538 is a small number of molecules to use in a reaction, why is 538 a small number of molecules? Because they're so tiny. Typically, chemists use much larger number of molecules. Recall that one mole is equal to how many particles? That big old huge number who, called who? Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to 23rd particles. Consider each situation below as it relates to the model in, in model 1. Calculate the amount of reactions consumed and products made, uh, and B, record the ratio reduced to the smallest whole. All right, so if the reaction occurred 600, excuse me, 602 times 10 to the 23rd times, how many molecules would be consumed or produced? Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. So it's going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in this particular thing. Why? Because there are there is one of them. Do you agree there's only one of those? Now, let's do the easiest one next. Let's go down to the um to the ammonia. How many ammonium were there? There were two of them. Now, somebody's got to do a lot of math in their brain. What is 6.02 times 10 to the second Doubled. Now you say 12.04, but I raise you this. Someone sides Dustin and Justin. Why did I write it like that? Why did I not just write it as 12.04? At ah, Jennifer. Perfect. That's exactly right. So the reason I just didn't write it as 12.04 is because there is a rule that states you can only have one number left of the decimal. So what did I have to change since I moved that de since I moved the decimal one place? I had to make it go to 24. Does that make sense? All right. Now the last one's going to be a little bit more challenging. What? How many hydrogens were there? There were three of them. All right. Now. Simple math, 6.02 times 3 is 18.06. So instead of writing 18.06 to the 23rd, what would you write? 1.806 times 10 to what? Times 10 to the 24th. Is that still logical? You ready? You ready? Okay. Um, there's the test, and there are the bubble sheets. But what do you notice again? Even though these numbers are so astronomically, asininely huge, what are their ratios still? 1, 3, 2. It does not matter. And where do those numbers come from? The coefficients. Very good. Now, how many moles of each substance will be consumed or produced in the previous situations? And this is when it gets easy because it's just that number divided by the coefficient. So... Both of these last columns are still 1, 3, 2. So hopefully you're getting the point that I'm trying to make. That no matter how much you start with, what are the mole ratios always going to come from? Coefficients. So is it important that you balance your equation properly? Uh-huh. Very much so. All right. How do the reduced uh, ratios in the last column compare to the coefficients in Model 1? They're the same. 5B, use mathematical concept to explain how your answer is par possible in part A. It's always the simplest ratio. Now, you've already started hearing me say this, but now it's just actually putting it into words. The ratio obtained from the coefficients in a balanced equation is called the mole ratio. What is the mole ratio for the reaction in model 1? One? 1, 3, 2. 
Now, I need to say this just in case that we're all on different pages. Will every reaction ever on the face of the planet always be 132? Thank you. I'm so glad you understand that. Okay. <laughs> it's, in fact, it's more rare for it to be 132. But it's whatever the coefficients are. All right. Part B, explain why this is called the mole ratio. Trying to think of the best way to say this so it makes the most sense. Justin, what were you saying? Actually, right. right, so I'm going to write it on this page. Go a little bit faster. is not animal talk. What'd I do? Yeah? That better? Sorry. Remember those little lies that we talk about? Chem in chemistry, each compound is considered a species. I know this. I just, just accept it. We're a homo sapien, right? We're a species. Ammonia NH3 is always NH3. What? So each, <laughs> each species reacts and is produced always in a... That's not... This is supposed to be a separated word right there. In a predictable ratio... Based on the coefficients. And every time something reacts, is it only one molecule? No. It's moles and moles and moles and moles and moles of them. Okay. Everybody good there? At least you're honest. How about now? <laughs> okay. It is? All right, so number seven. Use the mole ratios from the balance chemical equation that we have there to solve the following problems. Hint, set up proportions. And don't worry about that set of proportions. I've got that taken care of. How many moles of nitrogen would need would be needed to make 10 moles of ammonium? So let me ask you something. Do you agree that there is a dedicated value given to you in the problem? Yes. All right. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start setting this up very simply. So we're, we are going from... Uh, I really wish I had more room here, but let's just kind of see if we can do it. So we're going from NH3 to what? What do they ask about specifically? N2. Does that make sense? All right. Here's what I want you to do now. Underneath each value, what was the coefficient for each one? NH3 was a 2, and what was nitrogen? A 1. Does that make sense? Uh, put it on the back of the bubbles. So, how many moles of ammonia did they initially give you? Ten. Well, think about it. If for every 
two ammonias, I get one nitrogen. Well, if I have ten ammonias, it's basic, simple math. How many nitrogens would I have? Five. Does that make sense? Do you now see why it says set up proportions and set up ratios? I can assure you it's going to get easier. This is making it a little bit more complicated than it has to be. But if you can get this, then the next step is going to be much simpler. Okay. How many moles of ammonia could be made by complete by completely reacting nine moles of hydrogen? All right. So we're going from hydrogen to what? Ammonia, NH3. As a matter of fact, I'm going to come back up here and for just a second. I'm gonna, I want to do this. All right, so these are the species, and just accept that word for what it's worth. These are species. Um, these are the coefficients. And these are the ratios. Okay. All right, so again, these are the species. Next are going to be your coefficients. And the last is going to be your ratios. All right, so what, again, was the coefficient for hydrogen and ammonia? Three and two, right? Now, this is going to be a little bit more challenging because you got to do a little bit more thinking, but it's still not terribly difficult. If I gave you nine of those, how many moles of hydrogen would you have? You sure? Why are you on C? one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Whew. That was funny. Let me see if I can completely ignore what I'm fixing to do. Because I, my brain needs to look at it from a different perspective. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't like the way they gave you guys this one. Yeah. What's 18 divided by 3? Four and a half? Six. Wow. My, wow. Wow. It's a Monday. All right. So, so how did you get? How did you get from three to nine in the blue to red? Three to nine. Multiply it by three. All right. Well, what is three times two? Six. So one more time. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. How did we get from the blue number to the red number? Multiply it by three, right? Well, how did we get from the blue number to the red number there? Multiply it by three. So let's make let's actually do it the way that I'm going to teach you guys to do it in part C. So here's how we're going to start with this. 7.41 moles of nitrogen. So this is what I want you to write down here because I'm going to I'm going to come off the screen. All right. So write it just like this. We've got 7.41 moles of N2. This is the way I've always taught it, and I don't even know why I tried to do it the last one because this is much 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 simpler to figure out. So here's the deal. Set this up just like this. And if I had done it like this the last time, it would have been so much simpler. This is the best way to do it. So let me ask you something. If moles of N2 is on top, where does it have to go? It's got to go on the bottom. Now here's the part that you guys have never seen before. From this point, we've either always gone to grams or we've gone to atoms or molecules. Well, this is the new step. This is the step that goes in the middle. What is it asking you to go to just so I make sure I'm going to the right one? It says how many moles of hydrogen. Okay. So we're going to moles of H2. Now, 
Stay with me. This is the new step. This mole to mole step. That's why I use this and not that. Okay. And plus, I'm a very color-oriented person. Have y'all figured that out? Okay. All right. So, this is the new step that you guys have never seen, but it's the easiest step because you have to do no thinking. You literally look, and the, and the answer should be in front of you. So, this is called the mole-to-mole -mole step. How can you tell this is the mole-to-mole? There's a mole and a mole inside the same set of parentheses. Where do those values come from? The coefficients. The balance equation coefficients. What was the coefficient for hydrogen? Three. What was the coefficient for nitrogen? You're done. That's all you do. Now you multiply. Okay. Because if you think about it, what does mole of N2 do? That cancels and cancels, leaving you with that. Now, some of you are smarter than, than me. What is 7.1 times 3? Yeah, that's what it is. There's your answer. What are you doing? That's right, I can assure you that. So, this is the way to do it. So, here's what I want to do. I need, to, I need to kick myself for not showing you this a minute ago. I want to go back up to A and just show you what I was doing. So, the last, what was the first one? The first one said 10 moles of ammonia to nitrogen, right? So, let's, let me just show it to you. All right. So, I've got 10.0 moles of NH3. What's on top must go where? On the bottom. So I've got moles of NH3. And what was I going to? I'm going back to 7A. Moles of nitrogen. Okay. So here's the deal. If I'm trying to go from ammonia to nitrogen, I can do this step. This is mole to mole. And where do these numbers come from? The coefficients. And what was it for nitrogen? It was one, and what was ammonia? Two. What is 10 divided by two? Five. Is that not exactly what we got a minute ago? So this is a lot easier of a mathematical application to look at it. The other one, it was nine moles of nitrogen, right? Or hydrogen. What was 7B? Nine moles of hydrogen. Okay, and we were going. We were going to ammonia. Come on, play nice. Nine moles of hydrogen. Do you agree that has to go on bottom? Why does that have to go on bottom? Because it's on top, and we can go to moles of ammonia. What was the coefficient of ammonia? Two. What's the coefficient of hydrogen? Three. Now, you should be able to do that in your head. What do you do across the top? Multiply. What is nine times two? Eighteen. What is eighteen divided by three? Six. Is this a little easier? Pick up.